and the cane and they mix together is because mutations happen. Okay? There was giants in the earth in those days. You read through the Old Testament. Who did David kill? Goliath. About 12 feet tall. Had five brothers. King Obed. His bed was six feet wide, 13 feet long. And if you will go and Google out giants, um, you will find out on the internet, you, you will see gigantic bones of people that, that were anywhere from 8 to 10 to 15 to 20 to 25 to over 30 feet tall, like a three-story apartment building, the height, a three-story building, a house. You would see the skulls being the size of, you, of, of your body almost. Real giants. This has been suppressed by our government and the governments of the world. But now, with, uh, with the internet, with the age of information we got, is busting wide open. It's busting wide open. And these things are not hoaxes, but they're absolute truth. And you need to be aware of this. The Roman army, back in the Roman times, they fought thousands of these soldiers, these giants, about eight feet tall, giants. And so these sons of God, it's also in the book of Job, chapters 1 and 2, talks about the sons of God when they sang, when they sang up there uh, in heaven. And every, these sons of God, they came and they presented themselves with Satan. So we see that these are fallen angels. And... When he took these women, they had giants. Some of them had six fingers, six toes. And we know some of them had double rows of teeth. They were ferocious. Some of them were cannibals. Because we can go back into history and look at them. They chased down women and abused them and killed them. All right, this, that's, this is what was going on. And so it was an extremely evil day. And then in Genesis chapter 6, it says that, and again, after the flood, these things happened. It happened, in fact, this is so important, I want you to see it. So hold your place in Hebrews 3, and, and go to Genesis chapter 6, and let me, let me show it to you, so you can catch this, because I didn't catch this right away. Genesis chapter 6, and he says, um, And in verse 1, it came to pass when men began to multiply in the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair. And he took them wives of all which they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh. Yet his days shall be 120 years. There were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, after the flood, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, that they bear children to them, the same became mighty men, which were men of old, of men of renown. Amen? You see, after that. And these are not, I take it that they're always giants, but you heard uh, legends of... Um, the gods of Mount Olympus and the Titans and all these things. And now that we find these bones and everything, and I don't think they all have to be giants. They can be very intelligent men because they're mixed. They're mixed with these fallen angels, which are, in the book of Daniel, it says they're far wiser than Daniel. Amen? And, and so we have to understand that the Lord is telling us, like it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the last days. Right now, with the technology we have, with the uh, being able to uh, go into the, uh, the DNA, the genome, and all this, and we see the genetic code that is there and everything, we're starting to mess with it. Right now in England, they just made it legal. You take an embryo and you can put the DNA of a third person into that embryo so they would have the characteristics of this other person also. I have no doubt they're trying to make soldiers that can see like eagles. I'm not joking. They're trying, they're mixing, they, they took plants, they've, uh, they spliced genes together, 
with lightning bugs and plants, and these plants glow in the dark like a lightning bug. I've seen them myself. All right. We know they're cloning animals. I'm sure they're cloning humans. What else can there be? They're doing this. There's no end. The Lord said when Adam and Eve ate from that tree, He says, now there's no end to what they can do. Remember that? He says there's no end. And that's why God put an angel at the tree of life with a flaming sword turning every which way so they could not go and eat from the tree of life. Because in our condition of sin, sin is the transgression of God's laws, rebellion of God's law, it's hatred, enmity with God, with our Creator. In this condition, we cannot eat from that tree and live forever. Amen? So God is not allowing us to eat from this tree. In His wisdom, all this history that's going by, He's perfecting Himself a people which He chose before the foundation of the world. And he's going to bring them, he's going to bring them to, to, to his kingdom in the future in glory. And the last generation, before he comes back, sees the great tribulation. They see this apostasy, what we're seeing now. They see the Antichrist come and take over the world. And this Antichrist might just be a mixture, a genetic mixture of the fallen angels and, and mankind. Because we know that Jesus came, God came into flesh, amen? God put on flesh and blood. Well, Satan's going to do the same thing. He possesses people. He's a devil. He's a demon. He possessed uh, Judas to go betray Christ, remember? Go, do it quickly, Jesus told Judas. And they thought he's going out, or they need to buy something. They forgot to buy for the Passover. No, he was telling him, go quickly, betray me. Satan entered him. And he went to betray him for 30 pieces of silver. My faithful friend who sat and ate bread with me betrayed me prophecies from the Old Testament. And so, this is coming again. Now, in, in the wilderness here, when they, when they would not believe God, they died out there. I, I want to read to you now uh, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 1. Let's see what happens here. Let us therefore fear, lest the promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. Now people, listen to me. He's not writing this to Israel only. This is written to Hebrews, but he's not writing this only to Jewish people. This is not the gospel of the circumcision, not, and it's not to the body of Christ. The body of Christ is the whole church from Adam all the way to the end. This is the body to the dispensation of fullness of times. Amen. God chose us before the foundation of the world, and he's going to bring it all together in the dispensation of fullness of times. And so, don't make this big difference between Israel and the body. He's writing to you and to me. These are Christians who are Jewish, Hebrew Christians, just like the Apostle Paul was, just like the Twelve Apostles were. All right? Just like most of the saints were at this time. Let us therefore fear, lest the promise being left us of entering into his rest, into the rest of the Lord Jesus Christ, any of you should seem to come short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached, as well as unto them in the wilderness there. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. It's not that what they heard had no faith in it. They did not hear that believe on the Lord Jesus Christ that he died for your sins, was buried, rose from the dead. They didn't hear that. They didn't hear by grace are you saved through faith. What they heard was they saw the miracles, they, uh, they saw the commandments of God, they knew that they had to give sacrifices that without blood there is no forgiveness, no remission of sins. There must be the shedding of blood because the wages of sin is death, right? They had a system by which if they sinned, they would bring a, a certain animal to the priest so that, so that animal would die instead of the person because the wages of sin is death. And they had once a year, and they did this for over a thousand years, they would sacrifice the Passover lamb. Started with, they had to have faith to put the uh, blood on the doorpost, amen? And when they did that, it says that the, the uh, Spirit of God passed over, not the devil, not the, not the uh, angel that's coming to kill the people, the firstborn, but the Spirit of God passed over the door 
and would not let the spirit of death in there to kill the firstborn. And all of them, whether they were whether they were Israel or whether they were Pharaoh's people, Egypt, if they didn't have that blood on their door doorposts, they died. The first one born died. Amen. It took faith to do that. So this doesn't mean that they didn't have the faith of the New Testament or something like that. The faith was if, if they believed what God told them to do at that time, bring an animal, do this, keep these laws, keep this, to do all those things, then they would be saved. Amen? This is important for us to understand. Verse 3, For we which have believed do enter into his rest, into the Lord's rest. As he said, I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, all of the works were finished from the foundation of the world. For he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise, and God did rest the seventh day from all his works, the Sabbath, the fourth commandment. And this place again, if they shall enter into my rest. And in this place again, if they will enter into my rest. Seeing therefore it remained that some must enter therein, and they to whom it was first preached entered not in because of unbelief. So, see, it was preached to them. They entered in. They did not have the faith. They didn't believe. Amen? They just plain didn't, just like today. You don't believe, you don't enter in. It's as simple as that. You don't get saved. So they remain it that some must enter therein. And they to whom it was first preached entered not in because of unbelief. Again, he limited a certain day, saying in David, Today, after so long a time, as it is said, Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart. Saints, don't let your hearts get hard. When we keep refusing God, when we keep disobeying God, when we keep doing our own thing, the hearts get harder and harder and harder. Amen? Uh, a liar didn't become a liar by telling one lie he kept practicing. It. Amen? A drunkard didn't become a drunkard by drinking one beer. He kept practicing it. And the heart gets harder and harder and harder and more and more deception comes and soon you're finished. You've had it. And that's what's happened to many in the world. They just, you're like a piece of wood. The heart's like this. And God wants to give us a new heart of flesh, he says and a new mind to put his Holy Spirit in us, that we should obey him. And so they couldn't enter in because of unbelief. So don't harden your hearts. Now listen to verse 8. Now in my King James Bible it says, For if Jesus, he's talking about Joshua. This is a direct translation of the name Joshua from the Hebrew to the Greek. Joshua's name in Greek is Jesus. So he's talking about Joshua. For if Joshua had given them rest, if he gave them rest, then would he not afterward have spoken of another day? There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. Matthew eleven twenty eight. He says, um, My yoke is easy and my burden is light, and you shall find rest for your souls. Amen? You can write, write, write that down in your Bible right there. Mark it in Matthew eleven twenty eight. So, if Joshua would have gave them rest, they went and they conquered the land. They had a fight, all right? They, had, they, they, they did all these things, but there was no real rest unless you enter into the rest of the Lord himself. This is the Lord of Sabbath. This, this, is, this is what this means. The rest that God wants to give us is a permanent sabbatical rest, permanent Sabbath. It's not keeping one day, and if you don't keep this day, you're damned. Or this day is the mark of the beast, I've heard also, and everything. People, wake up. The rest is not in a day. It's in the Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, doesn't that make sense to you? The rest is not in a day.